name is Josh Kirby. I was just your average ninth grader. My biggest problem <laughs> was getting good grades. And my idea of excitement was racing my bicycle. Yes! I never thought time would catch up with me. But I couldn't have imagined. But hundreds of years from now, mankind would invent the nullifier. A device capable of controlling or destroying the universe. Prepare for the storm. A scientist named Erwin 1138 tried to disassemble and hide the nullifier. But even he couldn't stop. Dr. Zoetro! Give me the nullifier. You're too late, Zoetro. It's never too late for me. Erwin and Zoetro have been chasing each other across the time stream trying to be the first to find the nullifier's pieces. This time, they're gonna land in 1995. The place, my front yard. Now, I'm going along for the ride of all time. What's going on? Where are we? I hope you're prepared to do battle, young man. This will be a war through time, and Dr. Zoetrope will take no prisoners. We've got help from a warrior. My name is Elizabeth Siege. Oh, she's amazing. And a magical creature called Prism to show us the way. Together, we're on a quest through time, visiting different worlds to fight for the nullifier's pieces. I'm obviously in the right place and the right time. Because if Zoetrope ever assembles the nullifier, he'll conquer time itself. I've got to try and save the universe. I was just a 14-year-old kid before my adventure began. But now, I'm Josh Kirby, Time Warrior. on the last chapter of Josh Kirby, Time Warrior. I am trying every trick in the time travel book to locate Josh. There is the off chance that Zoetrope's slightly superior intellect may enhance his ability to pinpoint Josh's location. Josh and I are going into Nightmare Forest. Nightmare Forest? It's true. He is a time warrior. When I say we take care of that big bully once and for all. I'd love to stay, everyone, but there are three more of these deadly components to hunt down. Hey! Dr. Zoetrope's after us. Oh, commencing evasive action! Shoot the 
fire out. What? We're not turning. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and use one of your one in a billion time warrior powers and save us. By the codes of Kang, Erwin, do something! Do something! Pull off! Pull off! I'm trying! I'm trying! Zotrop's right behind us! Look where I come from! If a machine goes nuts, there's only one surefire method of repair! you, Josh Kirby. We were almost blown to smithereens. And I'm certain we will almost be again. But I hardly think that's appropriate behavior for a warrior. Warrior? What warrior? I'm a ninth grader. Woo! <laughs> yeah, we did it. We did it. I did it. <laughs> oh, I am now the first smartest man in the galaxy, in the universe, in the 25th century, in the whole of the time stream, as it should be. <laughs> oh, who knew that victory could taste this sweet? Mm, fare thee well, you no good! Yeah. Yes, Josh? Look, uh, the guy's dead. Should we really be celebrating? Look, I know he was a criminal, but... Josh, my boy, that no good Nick Zoetrope threatened to destroy all of time! Just for his own selfish ends, he showed no compassion or remorse as he went through and destroyed galaxy after galaxy. Why should I? While I agree with you, we must also respect the souls of soldiers who died in battle fighting for their cause, good or bad as the case may be. But, uh, you two are acting as if he was on some kind of noble quest and not on a mission to decimate the time stream. His demise, untimely as it may seem, is cosmic karma. Hmm? Surely there's a code of Kang in here somewhere. Come on, everybody, let's pat ourselves on the back. We saved time. That is true, but there is still much damage to correct throughout the time stream, and time is wasting. <gasps> Excuse me, can we at least catch our breath? Come on, Beth. As a Beth, Josh Kirby. As a Beth, I do not call you Osh Kirby. <sighs> yeah, thank Kang for small favors. Is it really that hard to relax? I will relax when the time stream is back in order, when my debt to you is repaid, and when I am back with my own people. And all this time, I thought you had some kind of crush on me or something. <laughs> well, everything's back to normal again, it seems. <laughs> now, what is that? Uh-oh. Uh, clogged intake valve. Mm. Must have time barnacles. All right, Josh, come on. Cut the forward thrusters. Uh, time barnacles, huh? Mm -hmm. Thought they only grew in the ocean. No, 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 no. No, they're living organisms which are indigenous to the time stream. It seems that they're drawn to all kinds of warm surfaces, particularly to our intake valves. It looks as if there's eggs stuck in the barnacles. It... Whoa! Look at the size of those suckers. Seen anything like these eggs before? Better get them in to inspect them. Are you certain that is the correct procedure? After all, we have no idea what reaction these alien eggs will have to the oxygenated atmosphere of the time pod. Young lady, think what we could learn from examining these eggs. Besides, we'll have to clean out the intake valve anyway. Yeah, would you let the man do his job? I mean, after all, they look pretty cool. Bring them in, Josh. date at 70 million years B.C. Whoa! 
like pre pre prehistoric eggs. They must have gotten sucked into hypertime and then attached themselves to those time particles. I suggest we proceed with caution. Mm. What's that noise? What's up, buddy? The eggs. They're moving. No. They're hatching. See, before I made your acquaintances, I kept a pet snake. The deluded creature once tried to ingest prism. Whole. Since then, anything that wriggles gives prism the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> oh, this is too cool. Wow. Amazing. Look how they interact, even at infancy. Not to worry, Prism. <laughs> they seem harmless enough. <laughs> oh, I must apologize. It appears I was mistaken. Mistaken? Uh, happens all the time. <laughs> Not to me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> hey, where you going? <laughs> Get hold of the modified components! Rip your head off! 
Yeah, how nice for them. This cold is somehow familiar. That beautiful time pod. Unfortunately, this little development terminates our objective. Totally. Unequivocally. You mean we're stuck here? Only say... forever. Hey, uh, th they're getting away. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Maybe all is not for naught. This building is somehow familiar. Hey. Here they are. As a bath siege. <laughs> Where on the twelve moons of Megan have you been? Sir, I beg your forgiveness for my untimely departure. And I pray that my actions will not be deemed treasonous to the codes of Kang, nor his followers. Azabeth, who's this clown? Show some respect, Josh Kirby. This is Akira Storm, leader of a thousand and keeper of the 21 Codes of Kang. Oh. Stand, woman, and give me a look at you. There's no suspicion of treason to the Great Resistance. We give humble thanks to the all-knowing Kang for bringing you safely back into the fold. We, uh, all feared for the worst when you did not return, and now, such a dramatic entrance. And at no great expense to our secured perimeters. Quite honestly, my arrival here was totally by accident. We had been wandering through the time stream for what seemed like an eternity when we happened upon a nest of worm's eggs. Worm eggs? The eggs hatched a pot of worms which ate entirely through the time pod in which I was traveling. Metal eating worms from the time stream. Come now. I swear it by Kang. 
So where are these worms now? They seem to have burrowed through into the bedrock. And how are they to be terminated? I'm at a loss for a solution. Maybe you could kill them with all that hot air. Silence! They are with me. With you? Josh Kirby, the young one, saved my life. Yeah, he did, did he? He's no older than a pup. Barely older than you when you joined the Great Resistance. You compare me to a human? I fear your time spent away from our struggle was not the most productive of your life. Nonetheless, I am home now, and all by their good graces. Very well, then. We must discuss battle strategies at once. Dreadnought, the enslaver, and his forces have had us under constant siege since your depart. As much I have to brief you on. Let us hurry. But, Commander, about the worms, I... I'm afraid there are far more pressing battles to be won before we can worry about these, uh, worms. I... I don't know how much longer we can hold Dreadnought at bay. Kregar, Valton, secure the breach to the exterior wall, stable yes, the humans in the brig. Yes, then stable the humans? Come on, excuse me? This Akira! Way. Search for weapons. Commander Storm, they are with me. And we are at war. And I cannot compromise this station by allowing two humans to remain free. Humans who already infected this battle station with some type of a uh, metal corroding parasite. Hey! That was an accident those things got loose. For all we know, they could be spies for Dreadnought himself. Commander! Our last military installation is on the brink of collapse. And you want to argue about a couple of humans? I will have none of this. Do you understand me? You are the keeper of the 21 coats of Kang. I will obey your orders. What? How can you do this to us? I am bound by duty and the codes of... Codes of Kang to do so, right? Yeah, I know. Is this how I'm repaid for saving your life? I will do what I can with Akira. But we are at war. Take them away. Let's go. Take his pack. What is going on now? Sir, I think you should have a look at this. Yet another infiltrator to undermine our defenses. Take this malignancy into custody. No doubt the brains of the operation. What? Brains? Him? Just as I suspected, they're smuggling weapons into our complex. Weapon? No, 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 no. That is not a weapon. But I mean, not yet. I mean, we, we have got to find the other nullifier pieces. Nullifier? I've heard quite enough. Take them to the brig immediately. Scott, and take this to our science officer at once. Yes, sir.
I've come to renounce you, Kang. Ever since I've been with the humans, all I've been able to think about was getting back here. To my people. To the home of Kang, the great liberator. Well, now I'd wish I'd never come back. I'm going to leave this place, and this time, I'm not coming back. Your home is where you choose to live. And I cannot live in a place where my friends are thrown into a prison cell because of some hundred-year-old prejudice. I'm going to liberate my friends, and we are going to find a way off this planet. I'm half human. Maybe I'll go live with Josh Kirby on his Earth after we've repaired the time stream. As he would say, I'm out of here. Why have the codes which have done so much good for my people serve the humans so poorly? And why does this cold planet have such a hold over my heart? I know I can't leave. But I also know I cannot stand here and live with this injustice. Josh, will you stop that? Don't look at me. How are we going to get out of here? Uh -huh. How are we going to get out of this time? Stuck on a planet full of aspects. Not that that's all bad, I want you to know. But some of these people are colder than an icebox in Antarctica. They don't hold us in high regard, either. You know, I just want to go home. I want to see if my dad's all right. And my friends. I want to change my clothes. <laughs> I mean, how many twisted time periods can someone save wearing the same clothes? Not that many. <sighs> These bars are as tough as steel. Tougher than steel. Oh, hello there, Benedict Arnold. I do not understand this sarcasm. Well, how about this one? Hi, you traitor. I told you that I would do all that I could, but Akira is in a difficult position. And my absence from the fight may have jeopardized the situation even further. Yeah, I'll bet. I must abide by his decisions. Our forces have put up an admirable fight, but Dreadnought pushes ever closer to enslaving my people. This battle station is our last hope. If Dreadnought succeeds in breaching the walls of this fortress, then the last free survivors of my people will be prey to his vile plans. So let us help. Erwin is now the first most brilliant man of the 21st century. Yes, Josh is quite right. I mean, that is, we could be of invaluable service to your fight. I'm afraid you don't know my people very well. Very headstrong. Oh, no. And very wary of outsiders. It was the colonization of the planet by humans that led to the original enslavement in the 21st century. Kang freed my people, and he set about laws which were intended to keep us free. But now Dreadnought threatens to destroy all that we have ever worked for. We will not be enslaved again. I am sorry that I have let you down, but I want you to know that I continue to honor my debt to you, Josh Kirby. I can tell. Do you know that you could have been detained outside where the temperature is 30 degrees below zero? Oh, well. <laughs> That's cold-blooded. Any sign of those worms from 70 million BC? I'm afraid not. Well, maybe that's a good sign. They could have dug deep into the bedrock of the planet and made themselves a nest there. Or they could be weakening the foundation of our installation as we speak and bring us crashing into the center of the Earth with them. Now, that would seem highly unlikely. 
With you two around, nothing I could imagine is highly unlikely. Asibus, could you tell me about the timeline inconsistency in your era? No. Why not? You can trust us. Look, Asibus, please. I mean, you must know how the timeline has been altered here. I only meant to say that there are no inconsistencies to report. What? Every place we've been to so far has reported gross abnormalities in the time stream continuum. I have noticed nothing here to support the zoetrope time continuum effect. Do not refer to it by that name ever again. It is not his continuum to effect, so it follows suit that he certainly doesn't deserve any credit on time theories derived from it. <sighs> Even in death, he continues to haunt me. Wait a second. I, I, I thought that everything that existed before the time scramble was supposed to be freaked out of control. Right? I mean, I, maybe we did it. Maybe we fixed the time continuum. I wouldn't count on it, lad. A more probable hypothesis is that Azabeth's world was actually created as a result of the time scramble, as you call it. What are you saying? Maybe this place would never have existed were it not for Zoetrope's evil plan. That is madness. My people have been around for millennia. Millennia seconds. What's the difference? Well, at least Zoetrope did one thing right. Look, I entirely understand the position you're in, but you simply have to get us out of here. For every second we waste away in this cell, some buffoon could be tampering with the nullifier pieces to disastrous effect. Seconds, millennia. What's the difference? As a birth, time is running out. I'll see what I can do. Well, uh, gotta look on the bright side. Hm. I wasn't aware that there is one. Oh, well, we don't have to watch our backs for that slime ball zoetrope anymore. <laughs> Shields are losing their power at a rate of 17% per quarter, sir. Divert one half of the auxiliary cells to shield power and restrict all non-delineated sources through the auxiliary house until further notice. Yes, sir. Our cargo bay is reporting massive disruption and disincorporation on three quarters of our operational fleet. Disincorporation? Justify. <laughs> well, sir. Yes? The ships have been eaten, sir. What? That's what they report, sir. All right, then. Quarantine the cargo bay at once and disinfect the entire hangar from top to bottom. Yes, sir. Compliments of your Josh Kirby, no doubt? It was an accident, Commander. Aye. One that might cost us our freedom. Ah! Ah, come on! Let us out of here! Oh, give it a rest. You can't bend the bars with your bare hands. Well, we've got to do something. They could keep us in this cage forever. I won't make it to the junior prom. I won't even make it to high school. <sighs> Forget about it.
These bars were solid steel. Were is right. Now they're as rusty as my dad's old pickup truck. This section here is still intact. These, where your hands were, are, are, are as old, brittle as bones. How'd it happen? You did it. Me? Yes, you. Of course, you did it. This must be another power of a time warrior. We've yet to even begin to tap into your abilities, young man. It appears you can bend time with your touch. I don't get it. I mean, what did I do? Well, you see, your simple act of will manifested a temporal acceleration of the latent proto -elect In English, please. When you touched the bars, you made the metal age at an incredible rate, causing them to rust and corrode in a matter of seconds. <sighs> Get out of here. <laughs> well, now, my boy, we can. Come on, you can use your new powers to help Azabeth. Oh, uh, no, I can't, not for a while, at least. <laughs> 12 hours, remember? Oh, yes. You discovered a time warrior can only use his abilities once every 12 hours. Oh, man, it sounds like they're taking a beating up there. Yeah. So, let's go help them. Yeah, as Beth needs me. Atta boy! Go! <laughs> <laughs> So much misery these days. So much mistrust. You've outdone yourself this time, Josh Kirby. But what can I do to help you now? Akira would never understand your methods, nor would he tolerate your wisecracks. I barely do. But I do owe you my life, Josh Kirby. And I will see to it that you are freed as well. Oh. Oh. Just as soon as I free myself.
Do you really think you could fend off me? Dread not the enslaver for very much longer. For as long as it takes. From the looks of your defense shields, that won't be long. Now you listen to me. <laughs> no, you listen to me. You can barely keep your equipment together, let alone defend the fidelity of your people. I offer you a choice. Akira Storm, leader of a thousand. <laughs> this is your last chance. Say the word and I'll call off the attack and spare your people. In exchange for them agreeing to be my slaves for the rest of their days, of course. That is no choice. Precisely. <laughs> oh, oh, the lovely and volatile Miss Siege. Oh, how I'm going to enjoy owning you. Go! Ah! <laughs> Careful. And holographic transmission, sir. I can see that. Thank you. And what do you want? I'd like to have a word with you regarding Josh Kirby. Why? Is this something else of mine he'd like to destroy? Swarming all around us. Do you think they've discovered that we're gone? They're too engrossed with the enslaver to worry about us yet. What's with prison? He's not lit up this brightly since the last nullifier piece. Must be down the wormhole. I think the worms are attracted to the nullifier too. Just like rats to cheese. There, where? Right on there. The, oh, the wall there. Yes. Quick, down the wormhole. Prism, I think. Look, the worms are glued to the nullifier piece. Just, just like moss to a flame. Being close to the nullifier component seems to sequester their appetite. That's it! That's it? What's it? I've heard your that's it before. I have a plan! Ha <laughs> ha no, I thought I was supposed to put a brain to this outfit. Look, I'm telling you, I know how to round up all the worms before they can do any more damage. First, I need Azabeth. What, 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 how? Uh, if the gods see us, they'll throw us back into the brink. You're the brains of this outfit, you figure it out. Let's go. I have more 
haven't proven myself to this squadron and to the laws of Kang. I demand that you release Josh Kirby and the others immediately. You are in no position to demand anything, young lady. I am not a young lady, Commander. I am a warrior, and I shall be treated as one. And where did you acquire such insolence for your commanding officers, hmm? Surely that is not of the ways of Kang. Uh-oh. You sure? Of course I'm sure. My keen sense of direction has no equal in this or any century anymore. <laughs> or maybe this way. Do you hear that? Yes. I cannot believe you're even saying these words. These humans have been here less than 12 hours and they've already caused as much damage as Dreadnought's entire army. They will be confined to the brig until I decide otherwise. Is that clear? I cannot stand idly by as my friends who have proven their worth in battle many times over right away in some jail cell. Compassion for humans. Isn't this a pretty little turn of events? My, how you've changed. I barely know you at all, Azabeth Siege. My betrothed. Wait a minute. She's gonna marry that dweeb? I have changed. How could I not when I've been exposed to ideals and worlds that you haven't even dreamed of? And what of these ideals have you seen? That we have been hardened. Conditioned by centuries of fighting and conflict. Our ways are suddenly barbaric to you. Maybe you would prefer the life of a slave. That is not my point. I am a warrior, be it in this time or any other. But what I have learned is that not everything can be solved through the slash of a sword or the blast of a fist. And this uh, Josh Kirby of yours, he's taught you all these things that I could not understand? This child? Have you forgotten the 10th oh. Code of Kang? One who is young in years may be old in wisdom. This child is wiser than many I have known who are twice his age. You dare quote the sacred codes to me? This discussion is finished. You must release them! And if I refuse... Then you will prove to all that can hear that the mighty leader of a thousand is blinded by petty jealousy. Me? Jealous of that twerp? I owe that twerp my life. Regardless, we are in a combat situation, and all full-blooded humans will be confined to the brig until further notice. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm trying to save my planet! Excuse me. I said Kaloon on Star. I demand a request of honor. If you will not honor my request for my friend's freedom, then you leave me no choice. Are you mad? I am not. So be it. Prepare the arena! Kaloon on Star. Now I think we'll know we've escaped. Oh. This is just great. Go to jail, right? Go directly to jail. Do not pass go and do not collect $200. Take them away. Now wait, you gotta listen to us, all right? We found a way to- Silence! Your interference has disrupted my plans long enough. Besides, Azabeth has bespoken a request on your behalf. You're free to go until the time of the testament. I must go prepare. Farewell, my love. When next we meet, it will be for the last time. Jeez. <gasps> Jeez Louise. What was that all about? Was that guy a killjoy or what? All it was was a little request. No. No little request. The request for honor is a sacred method among my people of defending one's convictions. It is a fight to the death. That is 
absolutely the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard you say. And trust me, you've come up with some doozies in your day. Fight to the death? There's no way! I... You can't do it! I must. No! You march right back to your quarters, young lady. You can't fight with that guy. He'll murder you! I agree with Josh. We'll just place ourselves under house arrest. The request has been sealed. And Akira's honor as a commander is at stake here. Noble though your intentions may be, I'm obligated to fight anyway. Elizabeth. I can't honestly believe you're going through with this. I honestly have no alternative. It is the way of my people. I'm fighting for your freedom. It is no less than what you would do for me. But Azabeth... Isn't it? I want to help you. Then say a prayer. to help Azabeth. It's only been eight hours. Not enough time's gone by. All we can do now is watch. Come on, Prism. May Kang be at your side. And at yours. Let's go! Congratulations, Commander. You struck first blood. You've gone soft in your time spent with the humans. You would not so easily have lowered your guard before. I'm glad my wound amuses you. I am not amused. Your wound pains me twice as deeply as it does you, but your insolence towards the Keeper of the Codes cannot go unpunished. And your arrogance must not go unchecked! I think you've forgotten the 11th Code of Kang, Akira! defeats his own purposes. Would you fight so vehemently for my affections as you do the young Josh Kirby? I don't fight for his affections, you simple-minded dolt. I fight for his freedom. You should never have come home, Azabeth. Number 
number 17. If you're going to strike, strike. Don't talk. Do it. The Kluon Star has ended. I demand the freedom of Josh Kirby and his companions. It shall be done. Do it. There are far more productive uses of my strength at this moment. And for all our sakes, we need your strength as well. Rise, Commander, while we still have a chance. I beg of you. Do not let me live a weakened man. You will only be a weakened man if you desert your people when they need you most. Dreadnought has penetrated the second level of our Western Shields. Even the third level has reported damage. Your people need you more now than they ever have. My people need a leader with a strong heart and a clear head. I no longer fit that description. You are one of the finest warriors our history has ever known. The Kluhan Star doesn't change that. Oh, really? I think everything has changed. I think we need a new Keeper of the Codes. I plan to go before the War Council tomorrow at dawn to submit my resignation. I expect they'll choose you as the new leader. You can't be serious. Why not? Your skills have been demonstrated. Your heart seems set. What are you trying to say? I'm saying that you've taken my heart and run it through with your sword. And I can't put my mind to the battle because all I can think about is you. I told you. Josh Kirby is my friend and nothing more. I heard your words. I also see the look in your eyes when you're with him. You had to make a choice between him and me. I think you've made it. I can't think about those choices right now. And neither can you. There is only one person who can save our people from this terrible time right now, and he is standing right in front of me. Save us, Akira. Or I won't have a chance to decide upon a husband. Some things have been left unravaged by those demon worms. Uh, look, I'm sorry if I caused any trouble, sir. <laughs> trouble? <laughs> what is the extent of the damage, Commander? Our airborne fleet has been reduced to a dismal few, and our entire weapons deck has been eaten. I trust with your freedom you've managed to find a way to harness these pets before they take to devouring the very flesh from our bones. Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, we have. Oh, well, tell me then. I'm all ears. Incoming message from Dreadnought ship. Commander. Bring it down. <laughs> I like what you've done with the place. It suits you. <laughs> I trust you aren't here for decorating insights. What is it you want? Oh, you know what I want? The enslavement of your entire planet. <laughs> well, you're in a chipper mood today. I'm always happy when I win. Oh, but you haven't won yet. Don't threaten me with bird pences. Win one, it's all inevitable. If I were you, I wouldn't be so quick to move in just yet. You might find yourself at the wrong end of an angry laser beam. 
And if I were you, which, by the way, I thank heaven that I'm not, <laughs> I would hold my threats. Because after all, I could just as easily kill you as to make you my serving boy. The day I succumb to serving you is the day I die. Well, then that would be, uh, today. <laughs> Blast you, Dreadnought! You have not defeated us, do you hear me? Now while there is breath in my body and fire in my soul! Spoken like a desperate man, if there ever was one. <laughs> what? It's not over yet. You said so yourself. I was bluffing. But what of Josh Kirby's plan? Oh, that is true. We have not heard Josh Kirby's plan yet. So tell us, boy, what have you in that mind of yours, hmm? Really? Why not? Things can't get any worse. All right. First, I need the nullifier components. Of course. We use your nullifier weapon to destroy Dreadnought's ship. Quotient, bring the possessions of the Earthling to the command center at once. Yes, sir. Uh, that's not exactly it. You see, the nullifier is useless without all the pieces. And so far, we've only found three. But for what we need right now, three is enough. This is the cheese. It's gonna lead the rats right to us. Josh Kirby, please, enough with your 20th century metaphors. What? <sighs> the nullifier is what the prehistoric worms are after. Now, of course, this bizarre occurrence leads itself to a hypothesis which is deeply rooted. Uh, Erwin, how long are we gonna keep circling this airport, huh? Of course. Now, you see, the worms are seeking the comfort of a blanket from their own period, which, of course, is impossible. Therefore, they find themselves gravitating towards something which, like themselves, has traveled through time. First of all, they fix themselves on my time pod, and then onto the nullifier components. Yeah, so we each take a piece of the component, and we try and draw the worms into a central location. And we suggest the transportation hangar. Not on your life. Those worms have already destroyed all but one of our air fleet, and I will not jeopardize our only means of escape on some human theory. What are your thoughts on the subject, or dare I ask? Well, as a great commander once said, things can't get any worse. Sir, the shield generators indicate that we have just under two hours of protection left. Proceed. <laughs> and let us pray to Kang that you're right. I was very proud of the way you handled yourself back there. Well, if you must, then you should. You've become quite the warrior, Josh Kirby. A decisive strategist and sometimes almost good company. Well, I haven't done anything yet. More than you realize. Uh, let's make our way back towards the hangar. Because with this nullifier component, as bait, Worms are bound to follow us. <laughs> Good thinking. Oh. those blasted worms when I need them! what he's doing. I doubt very much that he knows what he's doing, but he has a plan nonetheless. I've traveled down the very corridors of time with that boy. 
He's yet to let me down. But on the other hand, these worms of yours... Will you stop calling them my worms? They are not my worms. I did not create them. Not one tubular segment of their slimy little bodies. They are not my worms. Do you understand? It was just a figure of speech. <sighs> Sure. Kang says, when in doubt, turn right. That's a code of Kang. Number seven. Oh, hello. Worms, this way. Coming your way, guys. They're right behind us, and they're moving fast. We're just about ready. We don't have time for just about, Erwin. These worms are on our tail. Look, you worry about leading those pestilent things up in the right direction. Let me worry about the spacecraft. Here we come! Josh Kirby, the worms are increasing their pursuit of the nullifier piece. The colorful human metaphor would be... Scram! <laughs> Here they come! Make way. Here they come. It's your plan. It's your piece. Are we set? You bet. Now, once you're inside, press the red button on the control console. This will start the launch procedure. But be quick. You've only got 45 seconds to get out of the ship and behind that hangar door before she blasts off. 45 seconds, piece of cake. You realize if you fail, you're sending our last means of escape right into enemy hands. Relax, pal. I'm a time warrior. Professor Crochet? All right, come on. Hey, you, the ugly one in the front, let's go. Come on, here they are, come on. Trap. I've rigged a radio control device inside the carrier. 
So when Dreadnought hears your call, he'll think the transmission's actually coming from the carrier. All right, then. Here goes everything. This is Akira Storm with a Class 1 distress call. Dreadnought has left me no other recourse but to flee my home world. I repeat, this is a Class 1 distress call. I am in need of immediate assistance. Don't worry, Akira. I'll help you. Dreadnought, no. Yes. He's taking the carrier into his tractor beam. He's buying it. It's working. Closer. Closer. That's it, the carrier's on board. <sighs> so, what happens now? Oh, we wait. with that? What? That? Nothing. I don't hear anything. The attack has stopped. <laughs> you did it! Judge Kirby, you did it! <laughs> yes! <laughs> It will take far more than you, Josh Kirby, to stop me from my destiny. I'm coming, young Time Warrior, and I'm coming to put things right once and for all! Josh Kirby, thank you for your help. Well, it's the least I can do. After all, it looks like I'm going to be living here for the rest of my life. There's nothing our one can do? Even for the first smartest guy in the 25th century, he still has his limits. He has no way of jump-starting us into the time stream. Well, you saved my home planet, so you're a hero here as well. Well, there still are some in this joint who treat us like the plague. Akira. Bingo. Lover boy. Arranged marriages on my planet are a time-honored tradition. 
It has nothing to do with romantic affection or love as you know it. It's done out of necessity. Oh, so, so you don't love this guy? No, of course not. Well, looks as if everything will be as it was in no time at all. No, everything can't be as it was, Akira. But I thought now that you're back here permanently, you... Why do you look so glum now, hmm? This is a day of victory. But Josh and Erwin are trapped. Away from their home planet, and I am empathetic towards their feelings. As a warrior of Kang, you should well know that no victory is gained without some loss. Besides, you should be happy to be back with your own people, not off gallivanting in the company of humans. But according to the Twelfth Code of Kang, I must remain at Josh Kirby's side until my life debt is repaid to him. The Twenty-One Codes were not meant for humans. Has the Path of Kang taught you nothing thus far? If the Twenty-One Codes of Kang do not apply to all humans, then they do not apply to me. It is stated in the Twenty-First and Final Code of Kang, no soul can live in freedom so long as another remains enslaved. Your attitudes and actions against the humans are... are no better than Dreadnought's were against us. Your time spent with the humans was bountiful indeed, Azabeth. I apologize. Your wisdom and tolerance is even greater than your skill as a warrior. I believe you all have much to teach us. We all have much to teach each other. Well, the 12 hours are up, and it doesn't look like I'm going to need my time warrior powers after all. Did I have your spleen? I've come for it now. Lower your weapons. Or I dare on her brain the hard way. Neither does yours. Your grievance is with me. Oh, my grievance is with you, huh? Well, you don't give the orders anymore. You know, all I wanted was a few slaves. Why'd you have to go and destroy my ship, my crew? My empire! I did nothing but select a path. The choice I had to, to make me a better person. Yeah. That's why you're gonna have to pay. With her life. What happened? Where's Dreadnought? Your new Time Warrior powers. It must work both ways. You mean this? You have just zapped Dreadnought back into infancy. Oh, get out of here. You hold in your hands a bouncing baby enslaver. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm not ready for father. Take him. He looks so harmless. Almost innocent. Cute. Cute? Cute. That's a rat thing in diapers. Not necessarily. What you see before you is a clean slate. A soul which is now erased of all life's pains and pleasures. There's a choice of two different paths. The ultimate choice. A chance for goodness. Yes. A chance for goodness. But we'll all have to wait to see where this chance leads. Commander, I believe... No, not in that order, you nitwit!
What's happened? Where are we? Erwin. Look, the nullifier components. Great jumping meteors. It's a fifth component. Yeah, but how? And Josh, Josh, wait a minute. That's no tinker toy. At the moment, these components are recharging. The energy at the moment is pure Zandarian dynamite. What is it, electricity? No, not electricity. But it's energy. The equivalent of enough gigawatts to power a thousand time pods, or to zap a young man such as yourself into molecular dust. Yeah. Well, how much time will they take to recharge? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> C plus energy plus time expanded. Uh, add the pum -pa -dum -pa -dum -pa -dum and carry the one. You have no idea, do you? Uh, in a word, no. But I do know that if you had touched any of these, you would have become the equivalent of a human lightning rod. Oh, so it's kind of like the key on Ben Franklin's kite. Erwin, the question is, how in the name of Kang did we get here? Well, even though these five components are separate at the moment, when the four of them were joined together, they were able to create enough power to transport themselves across time and to get in touch with the first of the two remaining components. It also created enough power to drag us through the vortex of the energy. Well, I can see why you're the second most brilliant man of the 25th century. Oh, no. Now that I defeated Zoetrope, I'm the first. <laughs> it's lonely at the top. What is that? What is that? on my planet. Ouch! Holy! Oh, that didn't tickle, you know. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know I... Erwin? Yeah? Erwin, um, what's happening? Fascinating. Fun guy. Yeah, yeah, they look like they could be fun guys. No, 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 no. Fun guys. Fun guy. I mean... Parasitic bacterial organisms that thrive mainly on moisture and nitrogen. Yeah. Yeah, they're mushrooms. I hate mushrooms. I hate them. Except on pizza. Where I come from, they are much smaller. We call them lapdrosses, and and they don't have faces, and they don't speak. Oh, beloved furry one. All great and powerful. You have finally come to deliver us from the muncher. We pledge our undying loyalty, oh Erwin? Yeah? Erwin, why are they praying to Prism? Well, apparently, they, 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 they must think Prism is some form of deity. Yeah, right. The furry one. Yes. Well, they're right. Well, I mean, they're half right, because on, on the planet Prism comes from, for six lunar progressions of the year, he does indeed grow a coat of fur. Oh, cool. No, no, not, not cool. You see, the fur is... I get it, Erwin, I get it. Please. Be careful with Prism, Mushroom Fur. He's one of a kind. Thank you for delivering the furry one back to his rightful place. You have proven yourselves to be worthy servants. Hey, you can go now. Uh, Azabeth. Don't worry, Josh. She's probably just a little bit woozy from the air down here, that's all. I yeah. feel so weak. So tired. I... Erwin. Erwin, that mushroom she ate. 
could be that these fungi aren't meant for consumption by carbon-based life forms. You mean she's poisoned? That could very well be the case, yes. It's not my fault. She took a bite out of me. <laughs> this is too much. She won't die, will she? I mean, she only take one bite. Well, organisms have different tolerances relative to a dose of poison. The line between no effect at all and a lethal dose can be very thin. It's all right. I'm better now. Okay. On the next chapter of Josh Kirby, Time Warrior. Erwin, we've got to find an antidote. So where? How? Our king will know what to do. Come. I, I, I summon the royal doctor. Very bad. Only one antidote. Must taste from one of shroom spores. Puffball. So where do we find this puffball guy? Nightmare Hollow. No one who goes there will ever return alive. Ah, well, I'm obviously in the right place and the right time. Ah! Stingers! You <laughs> sting like bees back home. Only worse. <laughs> Let them make tracks. <laughs> On the other side of that bridge is a nightmare hollow. The nether regions. The evil place. The epitomal image of Dante's hellish inferno. Yeah, so in other words, we gotta watch our butt. Just call me run! Oh no. Rather quickly, Josh. Where's Puffball? Where, where is he? Josh! Five minutes. Great jumping ions! You're summoning up your own time storm! Josh, be careful! 